Uh, Tyler, we had built a uh, economic uh, model which uh, suggests to us that over the, at least the six to nine months, maybe six to 12 months, we don't see recession uh, happening. However, we totally agree with uh, Mr. Icon on the China issue. We think that's the biggest issue right now because as you listen to corporate earnings, certainly the second quarter earnings reports, one of the things that's mentioned repeatedly is the fact that uh, the trade issue, the dollar uh, currency in general, uh, is a big uh, negative or at least a cloud, a dark cloud in terms of uh, what's happening in corporate boardrooms in terms of capital spending. So we've been looking for volatility for a while. We've been advising our clients as such, and uh, we think it continues, and we would agree that the trade issue is the biggest, certainly near-term problem that's occurring right now and on the horizon. So, David, let me ask you this question. If the economy has slowed from, as uh, Steve was saying a moment ago, from a 4% run rate, uh, at least in one of the quarters last year, to something around 2%. Is that slowdown attributable, in your view, to the tightening that the Fed put into the economy all for the past three or four years up until December of last year, number one, and will further rate cuts be the kind of tonic that will juice the economy uh, into the future? And, and I guess the question, the reason I'm asking that is, it's one thing to cut rates from two or two and a quarter down, it's another thing, like in the uh, in the financial crisis, to cut them from five percent to zero. First, we don't think that the Fed is the cause for the slowdown. Uh, we think it's one hundred percent China trade related. Period. We think the last guest uh, and Carl Icahn have it exactly right in terms of future cuts. Uh, we think the it will help the financial markets, but it definitely will not be the catalyst to help the economy. Uh, we think, again, that is trade. If trade settles down, if we come to some sort of resolution with China uh, or we reach a detente, we think the economy is in pretty good shape and will start to reaccelerate again or at least be sound. If the China trade still continues to be a significant issue, uh, we do think that our economy will slow down. We think the global economy will slow down, and we do think it puts the market at risk. The Fed is not going to be able to correct that. This is a self-inflicted wound uh, having to do 100 percent with China trade. Ernie, if you think that we are potentially six to nine months off of a recession or maybe more, how are you looking at the market here today? Yes, we've swung back higher, so maybe today isn't the moment to buy. Maybe you want to wait for some more weakness. But are you looking for growth or are you looking for value? Oh, that's a great point. Uh, and uh, again, uh, volatility has been the issue. But one of the things that has been very evident is that even in this uh, uh, last couple of days, which was well spelled out by Bob Pisani, is that uh, market averages have done well. But what's doing well is the same names, essentially, that have been doing well, a lot of the big growth names, basically cap weighted. So we're seeing a lot of the algorithmic uh, trades going on, which are obviously favoring these issues. So we would, with growth having outperformed value this year by a large margin, we would be more favorable toward value-type names, those with uh, more attractive valuations. We'd favor domestic over international on a market cap basis. And we would be looking for some dividend yield in a sub-2% interest rate environment.